Gerald Johnson. Okay, Gerald. <laughs> You know, Jack Peterman you could just as well write poetry and cold prose if he ever read his uh, letters to the editor or his introduction to the symphony. The idea for this poem came to me when I was taking my dog Bogey out to do his duty. It was one of those warm days when it was apparent that Winter's back was broken. March being March was its usual perverse self, and that day was a harping in the spring. There were several more days of snow and blowing, but the end was near. I have rewritten the poem several times, and my experience is it will change more over the time. That's pretty common. Former U.S. poet laureate Ted Kuzer said that he rewrites a poem as many as 60 times. This poem is from an experience I had 70 years ago and it can serve as a reminder of a time when childhood wasn't so regimented and hectic. It's titled Spring Fever. Mind's miracle, a memory surfacing after decades, yet welcome like a call from an old friend not seen in years, prompted by a sunny day in early March, a spring fever day. About a South Dakota farm town in the 40s, Young boys carefree wandered the countryside at will. Warm in the sun, cool in the wind day, a low field full of last season's grass flattened from winter's snow, melted but for a lone patch here and there. A small trick easily jumped cascaded from a culvert in the elevated road adjoining, and flowing rapidly split the meadow, eroding clear ice clinging tenaciously to grass hanging from the bank. Next to the tiny stream, a sun-drenched knoll, its thick grass dry, enticed me to nestle in toasty warp. By turns, I fantasized figures in the cloud, played with floaters in my eyes, daydreamed, and dozed. Shadows lengthened, the waning sun dropped behind the grove of cottonwoods. A chill breeze broke my reverie, and content, I headed home. Nobody is next, or I should say somebody is reading nobody. Um, so I'll do the name. I kind of just made up that name, like right there and down, but um, I haven't written in a really long time, but I was at the Palau on Friday, and uh, I just, it kind of has to just come out of me. I don't really like force myself to write so I figure something. <clears throat> like great black holes pulling in and spitting out, bright burning matter of life. I find a black circle in the middle of your eyes, in the middle of your being. They take me in and shoot me out, processing information. <coughs> information of light lost in the night when nothing is known all around me. The voice of reason of grounded reality is heard in gels of wind and rushing water. Shivering hope of the lonely seekers looking for something more than the ordinary. Going out and getting pulled in, into the fear of someone different, into the fear of inadequacy. <coughs> that was nobody. <laughs> Mike Andrews, you're next. Uh, this is a self written poem. I don't have a title for it yet. I just decided to do this one. These kids made me come. <laughs> How can you say you're free? Entangled in their wires, they've got you. Us, all of us, they've got us. Networks of souls tracked, counted, Facebooked, and tweeted into their database and put on little plots of land to give up dreams, dreams we all had. Do you remember younger days looking at a mountain, looking as it climbed the sky itself and yearning to climb as it does? Not because you had to get to the top, but because standing on a giant's shoulders, you can see the world. My father took me fishing when I was a boy. We go to the lake and fly our boat through the crystalline reflection of the sky. Birds chirped, others sang, and we cast our lines. It wasn't to catch the biggest fish, but to sit in the midst of one of God's own pools, so you can enjoy the paintings that sit on his very wall. It's the same in the desert, the jungle, the tundras, the places we were put here to see. But we forgot, didn't we? 
We got lost in their scams and their hubs of progress so much like an ant farm that I can taste the dirt. We got lost in their streets and their one ways and dead ends. We got lost so we did what you're told to do. We stayed put. We built our shelters and spent our lives making fires that they used to burn us. They sent us to school so we can make our salary and waste our youth to help them produce. All for the American dream. To stand out over outside a plastic home and gaze out over your perfectly kept home. sugar out of my hand, who's moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who's gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild precious Thank 
Hello, I teach German studies at MSU, and um, before I start, I also have a quick announcement for those of you who are interested in more poetry. The Modern Languages Department at MSU organizes and hosts the first Worldwide Poetry Festival on Thursday night at the Emerson in the Weaver Room. From 6 to 8 p.m., you will meet poetry from all over the world. We have 19 different languages from Brazil to Bangladesh, and we read the poetry in the original language and then in translation. So please enjoy more poetry Thursday night. I left some flyers there on the counter for you. And um, because of that, I want to read some foreign poetry from my native language by a German-Spanish poet. His name is José F. Oliver. He was born in 1961 in the Black Forest, second generation immigrant in Germany, and he predominantly writes in German. And because of that, I want to read the original first, and then the translation I wrote, okay? And he traveled a lot, and um, that's a poem from his um, trip to uh, Lima uh, in Peru, and uh, he writes about this pleasure district there and called Sona Rosa, that was the title of the poem. So that's the German first. Sona Rosa. Farbort fließen Menschen flimmern ins Lichter nichts gekennt, wie man Bilder kennt dem Auge. Ein Bettler am Stock, Amulett, Muletta, die abhustende alte Kreises Gründel weit der Häusersockel, Gott segne sie, fünf Pesos kostet der Satz. Lebensmärchen, Stricher, Mutten, allen Teilen, Uniformen und Hans auf Hand aufs Herz, schräg national, Sirenen, Kaffees, Ambulantes. Ein Mädchen springt mit traurig Blick, kaut im Augen und Brot, die Hand ist weltauf hingestreckt, dem Dollar Ringo. Okay, so now my translation. <coughs> Sona Rossa. Color plays, tiles, people flickering, come into the mix of lights, like images are come to the eye. A beggar of pain, amulet, muletta, the cuffing of chrome, aged double dame of plinth balls, God bless you, five pesos for the sin. Lovers, hustlers, hookers, everywhere uniforms, and hand at heart slash national sirens, cafes, and rotary. A girl loves with doleful mean, chewing in her eye mouth bread, the hand busted out, whirled openly to the dollar green. Thank you. 
poem that I wrote myself uh, while I was registering the hospital. Uh, so it's called Imagination. Staring at nothing, laughing like mad, very happy and suddenly sad. Thinking of them, thinking of you, imagining that they love you. Crying at night, staring at stars. You stand there for many hours, dancing alone under the moonlight, imagining everything is all right. Staring at nothing outside the door. Then you see them and you start to soar, flying with them, holding your hand until you descend and reach the land. Now you're alone and reality comes and you hear the song and the wind that hums. Imagining stops and it feels so bad. So imagine again and laugh like mad. <laughs>